Well, it's just about time to start weaving. I checked the heddles to make sure there were no errors there, and I also checked the reed. I have my bobbin wound, and it's in my shuttle, and I'm ready to get started weaving. All right, from the last one, I did trim all of the ends off, so they're all trimmed. Like I said, my bobbin's ready, and this is with the brown. What I'm going to start doing, I'm going to press the treadle to uh, do the tabby one and three. And what I like to do is everyone has something different. I'm pressing with my left foot, so I'm going from right to left. It's just what I have gotten in the habit of doing. And what I do with the very first one is I tuck it in, wrap it over top of the end thread, the end uh, two threads, if there's two on the end, and I put my uh, treadle down. Now, in this case, as you can see, I don't have any filler. I used to do use filler, and then another instructor, well-known instructor, suggested that that's not always necessary because we do want our yarn to find the spot that we're going to be using and if we put filler in sometimes that takes into a different level again i used to do it not doing it now so you don't see it so i just went the one direction now i'm going to go the other direction and again i release it after i throw the shuttle and i'm going to go the other way and it's starting to meet and again this is again part of the waist or if you were doing a and i'm pretty hard. If you were going to do fringe, then you'd be able to have the fringe. And I'm going to pull that through. And I'm going to go back the other way. And sometimes the first couple uh, throws the shuttle, the selvages are still kind of trying to catch up. So I'm really not concerned about that. It'll, it'll all get there. So it's a little funky at the beginning. But again, I'm okay with that. Not a serious issue. And I'm just going to keep going here. And again, just trying to get things started. So if you are new to weaving and you're concerned right away about your selvages, just give yourself a little time and they will work themselves out. Again, I'm having a little issue on the one side here. So I am going to do what I tell people not to do. I am going to touch that a little bit just to get it started the other way and now it's starting to look a lot better on both sides a little sticky on the edges there you can see it's starting to come along you can see the brown uh, in there in between each one starting to get to be where I want it to go and now I'm going to start kind of going a little bit faster because I find that once I get into a rhythm, and everything starts to fall in place. The other thing that I notice, I'm going to pause for a moment. The other thing I notice is sometimes as you start to weave this part, until you start advancing and you get this rod over this part of the, the front beam, sometimes it's still, it's a little higher perhaps, or it's just not um, playing nice, I guess is what I'd say. I'm going to release the brake a little bit and just move a little bit forward. I'm going to keep on going. And right now I'm doing the tabby. I do have plans to do a pattern, but I thought what I'll do is my first is going to be plain weave or tabby. So I'm going to keep on going until I get to probably about 30 inches. And then what I will do, I will change the treadling. So I wanted you to see what it looks like at the very beginning. Again, already the selvages are starting to look a little bit better than they did at the very beginning. And that's sometimes what happens with certain yarn. All right, I'm a little bit farther along, and as you can see, the fabric now is starting to come uh, down around the front beam. So the selvages are already straightening out. Everything's looking better than it did. I want you to just take a look at how I throw the shuttle, and the yarn is about at an angle. And so the other way, it's still at an angle. And 
and I do close with an open shed. Right now, the bobbin is fairly full, so they're uh, going back and forth. It rolls off very nicely. When it starts to get empty, or when it gets lighter, at that point in time, sometimes I put little breaks. I just tap my thumb on the bobbin just to slow it down a little bit because it's going to get a little bit faster. The other thing that a lot of times weavers new weavers, and even I do sometimes, is that I weave a, you, we weave too close to the reed. You probably wanna stop probably about here and advance it. What happens is sometimes your selvages, then when you advance it, you can see where, it, at, where you advance it. So I would suggest not going much farther than here and advancing it. And also you have to remember not to go too close to this beam because if you have this race on your beater it may hit the wood and all different kinds of looms if you go too far or go one you want to wind it the other direction different looms have different ways of being able to adjust them so you can maybe roll the fabric back onto the um, the the yarn the beam in the back or you need to move more of it onto the cloth beam now how do we keep track of how far we've gone. There are many different ways. Again, this is the way that, I've do, that I do it. I usually go up to, and I do in 12. So I start where I'm going to be probably cutting that off. And I go to the 12 and I put a pin in there. Then I also have a little piece of paper that I mark a tally on, and I would check it off and say I did one a 12 inches. I also have this not under tension when I measure it. It's all gonna shrink up, remember. So under tension, it would be tighter, and I, I wanna get the most accurate measurement that I can. So in this case, I did 12, and what I can do is I may, sometimes I leave that pin in, and then I'll I, I accumulate different pins, but I do end up taking them off when I get a lot of fabric on the cloth beam. So that's one way. Some people literally uh, take a string and maybe they measure it and they pin that along on the way. Some other people literally take a, a needle and thread and maybe make a little loop in there they're gonna take out later and then they can count them. We all have different ways of keeping record on how long things are. And again, I'm already familiar with this yarn so I know approximately how much shrinking I'm going to get. I, like I said before, I'm going to do about 30 inches because I know that's gonna probably shrink down. It could be, when I'm done sewing it, it could be 25, 25 inches long. And I know that sounds kind of crazy, but that's a whole five inches. But again, I'm gonna be uh, an inch on each end for the, uh, for the hems as well. Now there's something else that I also do. You know, we have cardboard wrapped around when you're winding the warp on. I like to have a piece, and here's what I have, a, a small piece, to wrap around just at least one time around to cover up the rod, especially if you're gonna leave something on the loom for a while. Again, you wanna make sure that it's as long as the fabric, and then kind of wrap that around here. And then what I'll do is I'll put a little tension. So it covers that up and then it'll wind on smoothly. Sometimes if you don't put that on, I've noticed I get um, indentations in the fabric. Again, especially if it's something you happen to leave on the loom a little bit longer than you plan to. So something to cover that up is another suggestion.